lesson, folks. Again, my name is Angela Petrilli. I am here with another edition of the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman. Today, we're going to be looking at your time is going to come by the mighty Led Zeppelin. Yes. So, so looking forward to teaching this to you guys today. It's one of my favorites. The chords are fairly simple here. Okay. But we're going to be doing some really interesting techniques and some really cool ways to play these chords. And towards the end of the lesson too, I'm going to show you some other things you can do to really build up the sound and foundation of the song. So before we get started, folks, Tom, good to see ya. Instagram, I see you. Facebook, YouTube, I see you guys. Thank you for being here. Before we get started on this lesson today, what I would like to know is folks, tell me where you're tuning in from, okay? And your favorite Zeppelin album. So where you're tuning in from and favorite Zeppelin album, go and grab your acoustic guitar, let's put it in standard tuning and let's get started. Okay, so what's happening here is, well first, let me play the tune for you a little bit and we're gonna break it up again like we always do, part by part, nice and slow. As I always say, you can't play anything fast, you can't play slow. So, see, guitar is on, let's do this. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Again, we're gonna break this up bit by bit. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Get your acoustic guitar, put it in standard tuning. And let's see, ooh, we're getting Zeppelin II. Oh, love it, as some favorite Zeppelin albums. Physical Graffiti, a great one, yes. Zeppelin II, lots of Zeppelin II love. Houses of the Holy, that's my favorite. Houses of the Holy is my favorite Zeppelin album. I love them all, but I've got a special place in my heart for, Ze for um, House of the Holy. Loving this, folks. Zeppelin 4, Zeppelin 1 and 2. You gotta pick one, guys. You gotta pick which one. Love it, love it, love it. Again, thank you all so much for being here. Let's get started. So, again, those of you notice I'm playing a, a, a different guitar. This is an SC-13E Martin guitar. I love this thing. We'll get into the specs of it a little bit later. But let's go ahead and get started with this intro. So what we're gonna do here, it's based D, C add 9, G. Those are the three chords that we're basing this intro off of, okay? So what we've got here is we're gonna arpeggiate this D chord. What does that mean? We're just gonna pick the notes that are in the chord. That's all we're gonna do. Just like that. So what we're gonna do here, grab your pick. There's going to be a lot of hybrid picking happening here today. So those of you Get ready. Definitely have a pick handy with this tune, okay? So here is what we are going to do. Pick, open D string, then pluck the G string. Or with your middle finger, pluck upwards on that E string and then come back with the pick on that B string. So I'm gonna do that nice and slow here. Just like that. All right, first part, D chord, not too bad. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull off with your middle finger. See how I did that? It was placed on the second fret, that F sharp. 
and then I pluck outward. A pull off. Just like that. Then go back B string, G string. Isn't that beautiful? That's sustained. So what happens here? What chord is this when we lift up our middle finger? That becomes a D sus2 or a D suspended2. That F sharp on the second fret of the E string is being replaced with an E. That is your two. Pretty cool chord. I like it. So D chord. Let's do that one more time. Now what we're going to do here. This is C add nine. The way I like to tell my students, it kind of looks like a baby G chord, kind of, sort of. So what you're going to do here, your third finger, keep it at the third fret of the D string for this entire intro. Keep it there. Think of it as your pivot finger, okay? It doesn't move. It's that foundational finger that does not move, okay? It's going to make the switching of these chords back and forth way easier. So keep that in mind, that third finger, pretend it's glued there, okay? So. Okay. To our C add nine. Notice how the third finger didn't move. Let me show you what the rest of the fingers are gonna be doing. Your second finger, third fret A string, that's your C. Your first finger is gonna go on the D string second fret, that's E. G string, open. Third finger, remember, D note, third fret B string, it's locked in there. You're gonna then place your pinky finger, third fret E string, that is your G note, okay? So when we play the chord, that's what it sounds like. Really, really pretty. A lot of times I will substitute this C add nine for a C chord. If it works, I'll do it. A lot of times it does, and it's a really, really pretty chord. Okay? So. See how I did that little bit of a hammer on? To get to that C, so that open A string. Hammer on with that second finger, third fret C note, okay? Let's do that again nice and slow. So what's happening there? Plucking all of those notes there again. Hammer on on that A string to the third fret. Pluck the G string. With your pick, G string on the pick. The B and E string, there's the hybrid pick. E string, B string. Okay, again. Just like that. Again, let's do D to D sus2 to the C add 9. Take your time here. All right. Now, next bit. I'm lifting the pinky finger. Notice how that E string was engaged. Open G string, pick B string, open E string, lift that pinky finger again for that open E string, okay? So from the top. Okay, let's do that again. Right? Isn't that beautiful? Let's play it to time. One more time. Really, really beautiful per 
progression nice and open. Another pretty chord. All right, so. Now we're gonna go to G. Now remember what I said about that third finger, keep it there. Keep it there again, it's our foundational pivot finger. Don't move it. Okay, so now we're gonna go to G. I like this version of the G chord when I play this song. Usually most times when I play, I like to use this version of G. Okay, because I, I like having that added D note there, that added fifth. Sounds good, it's nice and full. You could, I know a lot of us know the, thir the three finger version. It's okay, it works, Still, it's still a, a G chord Why You have the B present here, which is your third, but you can also replace it with that fifth as well, third fret B string. Okay, so both work. This is the one I like to use a little better. All right, so here we go. Here's what's happening now with G. See how I hammered on again, open E string this time. Second finger hammers on again, but this time at the third fret of the E string, that's your G, that's your root, okay? Let's go ahead and do that again, nice and slowly from the C add nine. What we do after this now, open G string, B string, lift that pinky again, E string, open, okay? Nice and slowly in context, playing it from the top, here we go. Again. Now to speed. Again, beautiful, beautiful. Man, Jimmy Page writes some good stuff, doesn't he? Isn't that great? Now the riff. Let's get into that. Second finger, we're gonna be putting it to work here, okay? Here's what we do. We're coming from that G chord. Let me play that correctly. Okay. Third or second finger, third fret, A string, your C. You're gonna do a hammer on A string open, then a hammer on third fret of the A string, C note. All right. Now. After that, open D string. Again. Now, we're gonna hammer on at that second fret D string. But when we hammer on to that D string, we're gonna do here. This is where the hybrid picking comes in handy, okay? Your pick is gonna hit the D string. But your second finger, your middle finger, what that's gonna do is gonna pluck the B string, third fret, at the same time. So you get this. It's dissonant, kinda weird, but that's what makes the riff really great, okay? So again. Hear that? You're gonna do that hammer on one more time on that D string. D chord, notice, 
See what I meant about that third finger? See how important it is to keep it there? It's your pivot for everything in this song, for the intro. Look how flawlessly we get back to the D chord. Okay, so that's why. Take your time with this, because it's such a cool technique. Keep that third finger there. Okay, so go ahead and try this again, slowly, and then we'll play the speed. more speed. That continues on through the verses. So, if you want to continue with that, great. If that's a little too advanced for you, totally cool. What you can do, if you want to do more of a level one sort of thing here, just play the D chord to C add nine, and then play that riff. Okay, so you can do that too, but it's so fun to do the hybrid picking and like arpeggiate all those chords, it's just awesome. So that's the intro, that's the verse. Now there's this really cool little bit here. And then goes into the chorus. Let's talk a little bit about that for a moment. Here's what's happening slowly. Again. When we break this down and we play this slowly, it's not as, it doesn't sound as scary as, as you might think. It, it, you can get your hands around this. It's a really, really beautiful part. So let's talk about what's happening here. Again, this is a D chord. It's just an inversion of one. So this is just another new way to play a D chord. Not great. So why is that? Well, let's go ahead and look at the notes here. You have your open D string. You have this note here. Hey, look at that. It's another D note. You're getting this octave happening here. Your third finger, you're gonna go ahead and wanna place this on the seventh fret of the G string, okay? Just like that. Your pinky finger, you're gonna go ahead and put this on the seventh fret of the B string, B as in boy. This note here is your F sharp, is your third, okay? Now your first finger, place that on the fifth fret of the E string, that's your A. So when we put these three together, D, F sharp, and A, those are the three notes that built a D chord. We see them here, they're just in a different order. So this is a really cool new way to play D, okay? So, here's what we do now. Now we wanna play the tune. Keep in mind that we're gonna keep this, this D string, this open D string droning through all of this. See how I did that? That D just, it's gonna start off every single one of these chords that we do in this walk down, okay? So that's how we want to play that. What are we doing with our right hand? Here's what's happening. P 
pick on the D string, pick on the G string, pick on the B string, and your second finger pluck upwards on E. That's how I like to do it. I find it, it, it it's nice and it moves very efficiently. For my brain, this is how I like to do it. If you have another way that works for you, great. This is how I like to do it. Just like that. One more time. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. Now this is the next chord. Let's talk about what's happening here. So, looks a little wacky, but I promise you can get your hands around this. Pinky finger, go ahead and place this on the seventh fret of the E string. That's your B, B as in boy, this note here, okay? Your first finger, what you're going to do, lay it across. One finger across two strings. Lay it across the B string fifth fret and the E string fifth fret, just like that, okay? This is going to come in handy later. I know that my pinky is covering the seventh fret of the E string, don't worry. We're gonna release it in the next bit. So keep it there like that, okay? Your second finger, place it on the sixth fret of the G string. This note is C sharp, okay? Isn't that beautiful? So we've got a C sharp here. You've got your E here and a B. Pretty chord, all right? So, from the top, and again, picking pattern, exactly the same. Pick D string, pick on the G string, pick on the B string, second finger, upwards pluck on the E string. Okay, not too bad, right? Not too bad. Now notice that shift between this D here and this, I don't know, I'll call it, I guess an A9 without the A, I guess. Watch the movement to there. So keep that first finger in position. On the D chord here, right? You have that first finger on A. All you're gonna do is flatten it, pinky goes down, lift the third finger. Second finger goes to the C sharp on the sixth fret, okay? Again, not too bad, not too bad. Now what you're gonna do next for the first chord, or the next chord is we're gonna play an A chord. Okay, again, and then I'll, I'll play it in context and I'll tell you how to do it. Oop, not like that, don't do that. Notice, all I did was lift the pinky out of the way, showing us our A chord here, our A, fifth fret E string, our E, fifth fret B string, and the C sharp, sixth fret G string there, like this. Just another inversion of A. We have an A here, but we have a regular A here. But notice how they sound different. Cool stuff, right? So, again, from the D chord, Pinky. One more time. And picking pattern exactly the same. The pick is going to pluck the D, G, and B strings, pluck upwards with that second finger on the E string. Okay? So from D. Now, we're going to bring this shape back. Remember that, that new D inversion shape. We're gonna bring it back, but this time, first finger is gonna go on the third fret of the E string, that's G. Pinky finger, fourth fret, B string, that's E. And your third finger is going to go on the fifth fret of the G string, that's C. Those of you keeping track, this is a C chord. This is a new way to play C. Again, another inversion. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. 
So that's what's happening there. Okay, that's C chord. So now what we're gonna do, I have some people asking if this is in standard tuning. The answer is yes, we are in standard tuning here. Okay, and after this, I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of your questions. So keep writing them in the comments. I am seeing them flow in, keep writing them. And then right after this, I'm gonna get to some of these questions live. All right, so we've got D. Now to that new C chord. See how the droning D string is still there, picking pattern exactly the same. And guess what? We do the same thing as we just did, just a whole step back. So let me show you what I mean. First finger, go ahead and put that across the E string, third fret, B string, third fret. Those of you keeping track of what notes we are playing, G, third fret, E string, and D, third fret, B string. It's always good to know where your notes are, folks. This is how we can really, really go ahead and build chords and scales and solos anywhere we want. So it's really, really good to begin to, you know, I don't wanna just call out numbers to you. I want you guys to know what notes you are playing in this, okay? So that's across there. Pinky finger, put it on the fifth fret of the E string, okay? On that A, don't worry, it is going to be released in the next chord, okay? So now we're gonna do here, second finger, fourth fret, G string, that note is B, B as in boy. So we sound like that. Very Hendrixy. I like it. Okay. So we're going to do here, same exact picking pattern as the chords before it. Okay. So that's what's happening there. Now, let's go ahead and do this. Lift the pinky to show this new G chord. Play that D string too. Okay. The whole thing from the top. Then to our D chord here. Okay, pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna play it slow a few more times and I'm gonna go ahead and play it to speed. and arpeggiated towards the bottom. Why not? Sometimes I do when I play it like that, okay? One more time slow, then we'll play to speed. Okay, now I'm gonna play it a little faster. If you wanted a little bit more fuller and you didn't want to just arpeggiate downwards, you can go upwards too. That's how I like to do it. And I kind of double it. So that's a way you could do it there too. So from the very, very top intro verses into this riff here. So. Let's do that one more time, we'll get to the questions. Okay, 
So that's what's happening there. I'm seeing questions and all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and take them live here. Does Jimmy Page finger pick this or use a pick? Really good question. I am actually not too sure. He may just finger pick this. He may be doing hybrid picking. I am not sure. I know when I play this, I like to hybrid pick this song. Cause I like to have, I really like the difference between what a, what the strings sound like with the pick and the difference between how they sound with flesh against the strings. Sometimes the, or, or most times is the way that, you know, the flesh and your fingertips work. It brings about a warmer tone to the instrument. Whereas this, as I like to tell my students, and this is one of my Petrilli picks today. <laughs> um, these are the cheapest amplifiers you could buy ever is a, is, is a cool pick. So, but I like that tinniness and the brightness that comes out of a pick versus like say a thumb. Hear the difference? So it depends. So when I am playing live, I really like to have those peaks and valleys of having the ability to have that sound of flesh on the strings. Right? But then say I wanted for the verses, let's just say a song was really, really delicate. I would go ahead and mainly use the fingers to play. say a chorus was big, you use the pick again to, to, to make these peaks and valleys when you play. So it's, you have the option of being really loud, but if you need to be quiet and delicate, you have that option as well. So that's why I'm a big, huge fan of, of hybrid picking. I love it. Great question. Okay, so let's see here. The opening keyboard segment is difficult to transcribe on guitar. I'm sure that how epic is that? beginning i just love that intro with the keyboards and all that good stuff oh, it's so good it is so so good all right folks let's see here very very resonant high string focus chords yes yes it, it, it's neat to to use these different inversions to go ahead and and play because again the song wouldn't particularly sound the same if i played these chords played like my A here and my C and G here, it wouldn't be as climactic, perhaps. And then like you're leading up to this really, really awesome anthemic chorus, you know? So, so that climbing up, I find, is just so, so cool. And, then, and those inversions that he uses in here, I think are just really great. So I hope you get those under your fingers and, and, and get to play in these and using it. But yeah, so I know I'm getting a bunch of questions about this guitar, so let's go ahead and talk about that for a minute. Folks are asking if this was the guitar I used uh, for, for the Guitar Center uh, commercial, and the answer is yes. <laughs> this, is, this is a guitar that I used. This is a Martin uh, SC13E, and I absolutely love this thing. As you can tell, it's got a cool different kind of body style. I really, really like it. For inversions and definitely stuff I'm doing higher up in the neck, I like using this guitar a lot, super, super bright. It's got a triple O depth and is really, really comfortable to play. I, I, I love the neck. The neck's got this really cool helix shape to it that as a player and so, someone who, who plays a lot of acoustic as well as a lot of electric, there's a lot of similarities between an electric neck and acoustic neck in here, but it's still like a little different. So I, I, I'm really, really loving this guitar a lot and it's just so so fun to play i really like the tone of it and it's it's a martin you know but it's it's a new like edgier interpretation of what an acoustic guitar is and what an acoustic guitar should do so i figured for this song this this felt like a really cool guitar to, to bring out for this song so as far as pickups are concerned i've got the fishman mxt in here and it's got a tuner on board too which has been massively helpful for, for a lot of stuff it's always good to have a little tuner then i'm going through the fishman aura spectrum di i have it set to the same presets as the black acoustic uh, my triple o 17 
that I use for these lessons as well. So I've got it the same presets just because they're both that triple O depth. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the silver box that I just love that I bring to all my acoustic gigs. It's such a, it's such a great pedal and I really, really like it. It's nice to have, it's nice to have your own DI. It's always helpful. It's always helpful. And I just love the acoustic images on that. So again, it makes life way, way easier for a musician who's doing lots of gigs and stuff. It's a great, great piece of equipment. So if you guys don't, if you guys haven't heard of it, be sure to check it out. Man, does it make playing live gigs so much easier and live gigs are like slowly coming back. So like, yay. Uh, what I've got as far as amps are concerned for the tones here today, I've got a loud box performer by Fishman. Really, really great acoustic amp. I love the response and the tones of it. And again, just with the Fishman gear, they make the guitar sound as it should, which is something that's really, really important to me, particularly when it comes to acoustic guitar, because we buy an acoustic guitar because it sounds great acoustic. And I, I think with all of the, the stuff that Fishman comes out with acoustic guitars, it really just makes your guitar sound as pure as it would if you were, you know, in, a, in your living room jamming with your friends. So that's what I'm going through here. I'm being mic'd up with an SM57 and then out to all of you folks. So, so happy you are here. Uh, let's see. So those of you who are just tuning in, thank you all so much for being here. Let me know. So those of you who are just joining us, let me know where you are tuning in from and your favorite Led Zeppelin album. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to this. And again, if you guys are having a blast, be sure to give us a follow. Follow the folks at Fishman. They, they're doing some really, really great stuff. They're, they, oh, talk about really, really awesome content. Be sure to check them out on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and all of that good stuff. Lots of good shows happening on, on the Fishman channels. And I am so honored to be part of the roster over there. There's some really, really great talent and just amazing, amazing musicianship. So be sure to go and check it out. And you can follow me, Angela Petrilli Music, on all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. If you're having fun, be sure to subscribe. So let's go ahead and talk a bit about the chorus, okay? So the chorus is two chords. <laughs> two chords we have some different voicings as you noticed I perhaps did some suspensions with that D chord okay so I'm gonna go and play that again you'll see what I did there in a second too so the chorus is based around D and G. Now there are some suspensions as you also notice that I threw in a C add nine too. I sometimes use that to add some depth to this song as well. If you're feeling like you just wanna add that added C chord, you can totally, you can totally do this as well. Again, just embrace the energy of Jimmy Page when you're doing this because again I don't I, I he he never played the same song or he never played the song the same way twice you know just god just what a what an incredible incredible musician and absolutely one of my favorites not only on electric guitar but on acoustic guitar too so with this D chord hammer on from D with the D sus4 with my pinky on the third fret of the E string. I'm gonna do that again nice and slow here. Okay, and again, we're mimicking the verses that are the things that are being sung, the melodies in that chorus, that your time is gonna come. We're doing that here. Or a G chord. So that's what's happening there. If you find that this bit is perhaps too difficult, then just stick to a D chord. That's fine. Let's go ahead and get you thinking about how to play this. So again, D to D sus4, back to D, us to lift up that second finger, releasing that F sharp and engaging the E string, the E note. Again, 
again, that's what makes it the D sus two is that E note in that chord, okay? So let's go ahead and do that again nice and slow. Again. Then what I do there, I just hit you can call it a D5 because I'm not hitting the third at all. So I'm strumming only the D string, G string, and B string of that D chord. I'm not giving any acknowledgement to the third, okay? Again, that's going to take a little bit of technique here because I know those of us particularly who are beginners and inter intermediates, you're going to want to strum everything but this is a good technique to just be mindful of sometimes when we have chords we don't always strum all the strings all the time so this takes a bit of practice but it's so so well worth it it's a really cool thing to do so again I'm gonna do it a few more times there you go and also notice using the pick See how light my right hand is here. Okay, we don't want to, we don't want any messiness here. So something that I tell my students too, we don't want to be too aggressive on the strums. Let the pick do the work for you here. Whether you're using a, you know, if you like the thinner picks, great. If you like heavier picks, great. Uh, we want for this, and what I tell my students, like, how to hold this pick. What you want to do, see the, the, the pointy end here? Have that always face, or always have it pointed towards your stomach, okay? See how the pick was always pointed this way? When you start doing this, see how you can hear the peaks and valleys of those notes and those strings? that may not be the desired effect that you would like in your strumming. This is something I see with a lot of guitar players or like, they think they have to do that. In fact, you don't. Keep it pointed towards your stomach and let it do the work for you. Give it the power from your upper arms, your elbows, all of that, right? Even a little bit of wiggle in that wrist. And that's all you need. Let the pick do the work for you. Again, it's the cheapest amplifier you can buy, okay? So don't overthink it too much with the pick. Again, we don't want to point upwards and downwards because it... we don't want that in our strumming all the time. Sometimes for effect, it's a cool thing to do for like an ending of a song or something like that. But generally when we are strumming, we want to keep this pick consistently pointed towards the stomach, okay? times here then we go to our G chord and again notice that third finger did not move pivot finger keep it there it's gonna make the switching so much easier so much clearer so much more consistent okay see what I mean so let's go ahead and do that again super aggressive here. Let the pick do the work for you. As you notice the way that I like to strum, I'm getting a lot of power from this upper arm, right? Bicep, tricep, having that elbow as that windshield wiper <laughs> type move that gets you nice, good, broad strums. The reason why I like to do this 
Notice how you can really hear the sustain of the instrument when you have those wide strums, right? Versus if you have short ones that say only are the width of the sound hole. See how the strings don't ring as much? And I can still do the same time, but have wider strums, again, coming from that elbow, versus where you cut a lot of that sustain out with beautiful songs, particularly on acoustic guitar, that sustain just makes or breaks a tune. So make the space for that sustain. Don't be afraid to have broader strums. Now, you don't have to like strum so hard and like hit your face. You don't need to do that. But just, just try, I, I encourage you to try it. Also notice this too. I'm not, I am working naturally with the way that my arm works. See how it's not a straight line? Your arm moves and out, kind of like a wide U. See what I mean there? See how it's not straight? I know a lot of us guitar players think, oh my gosh, we have to play straight when we strum. But if you really look closely, there's a bit of a curve, a bit of an angle, right? So think about that. Let the arm move naturally, because this is something I get a bunch of questions on when it comes to strumming, is let the arm move naturally and as freely and as comfortably as possible. Because again, we want this to feel like second nature here, and particularly with a song like this, we really, really want that right hand to be incredibly comfortable when we are strumming the instrument. Notice, again, like a wide U. A really wide U, that's what the arm is doing. Okay, I know for some of you this is super, super basic stuff, but again, you know, take what you will from this. There's always stuff we can learn at, you know, any sort of, uh, you know, player place we are in our, in, in our playing and, and, you know, at, at any level that we are at. But yeah, but think about that. We don't want to be too massively aggressive because again, we're just going to really hear those peaks and valleys of those strings. Sometimes you don't want that. So from the very, very top of the song, here's what's happening. I'm going to do it slower and then I'm going to do it fast. And then we're going to get into this percussive bit that's happening here, which is very, very fun. So. Nice light touch here, folks. And again, the chords are simple. The way that we play them, thoughtful. Give it some thought. Give it some good intention, okay? So, also too, which you may have noticed, when we get to the verse into that pre-chorus. Yes, that was something I wanted to mention. Let that D string ring, which gives you time to be like, oh, where's that inversion? See what I mean? So, so from that riff. See that move? Work on that. It's a really, really cool little bit. It gives you a second to breathe. Compose yourself, get to that inversion. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about that percussive bit that happens 
right before that second verse. So again, the chords D, C add nine, keep the third finger there, folks. G, third finger in position, okay? You're gonna do this F over C, which is kind of fun. I like this chord. So what is this? How do we play it? We're gonna use these four fingers here. First finger, place that on the first fret of the B string, B as in boy, that's your C, you're gonna go ahead. Second finger, second fret, G string, there's your A. Third finger, third fret, D string, there is your F. But what we're gonna do here, third finger, bring it up to the third fret. The A string, which is your C, your pinky finger takes its place underneath it. Pinky finger plays the F on that third fret of the D string. So here's that chord. And we're not gonna play this bottom E string. So just like that, okay? So when it comes to the percussive, I, I just wanted to add that new chord just so you guys know it and can follow along. What we're gonna do here, you're gonna hold your pick like this. But see how my hand is nice and open? Like that looks like chicken or a rooster, however we're gonna think about it, okay? You're gonna go like this. You're gonna hit the strings. You're gonna slap them with these fingers while still holding your pick because you're gonna need it in a few minutes, right? Or a few seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So we've got. It's fast, but we're gonna take this slower now. So one, two, just like that. Now notice how my hand is on a little bit of an angle here. I'm keeping the pick away from the strings being held by my thumb and my first finger. It's tucked away. So by the time we go to that D chord, it's ready to go and engaged, okay? So I'm gonna do that again. D, C add nine, G, F over C, then we go back to D. So I'm gonna do this a few times. And again, follow along. Again. Again. All right. On the song, it sounds like super aggressive. He's like just totally going at it. It's a quick switch, but you can do it. Take your time. Again, as I say in these lessons, you can't play anything fast, you can't play slow. So really take your time with this. Practice that slowly. The chords are basic, you know these already. So it's just a matter of engaging and applying this new technique. Hitting those three fingers, middle, third, and fourth on those strings. And sometimes the pick hits the body of the guitar, it's okay, it adds to it. <laughs> You're gonna feel a little bit of tenseness here. It's okay. We're building up, we're building up new muscles. It's always a good thing. So pretty cool, right? So so that's that's basically it. That's the tune. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna play the whole thing. I'm gonna play it to speed, and have your questions ready. And after that, I'll give you some other things that you can add. Say you wanna play this song with some friends and there's gonna be multiple guitars. I wanna give you some options that you could think about, particularly in the chorus itself and things you can do to, to build up instead of having to play in the same space. You can go ahead and add inversions. So here's the tune.
more time. Now to our hits. You guys know the tune. So, so yeah, this be in time. Just practice slow first. Practice it slow. Practicing this to a metronome is something I highly recommend. Always a good thing. Always good to have that little drummer on your shoulder to remind you that you are either in or out of time. It's always a good thing. It humbles you as a musician. I, I again will say this over and over again how. Absolutely wonderful incorporating a metronome in your playing is. It's really, really great. So, so yeah, with that, again, that technique, first those three fingers. It's our time to be a drummer in this song. back into it okay so getting to say you're playing the song with some friends and that chorus it's D and G and you're like well it's pretty easy like I don't want to just do that what you could do is just do different inversions hey look at that you can play this version of D on top of this chord we know that that's D and G, so guess what? We know another version of G here too, just from that walk up that we just learned not too long ago. So, notice how these two sound well together. So, they sound good together. So what we're gonna do here is you have this G triad that we know already. First finger across the third fret of the E string and that B string, G, and this note is D, you have your Second finger on the fourth fret of the G string, that is gonna be your B note. What you can also do now is extend it even further. Give yourself another G to work with. Put that third finger, this time on the fifth fret of the D string, and then just play that. That's another G chord. It's a little more extended, right? This one pretty much takes care of the first three frets, but this one takes care of three, four, and five. So notice how those two can sound very good together. And if you really want to get fancy here, you could do a suspended four, so a G sus four over this two, getting your pinky placing that on the fifth fret of the G string. That note is C. And sounds really awesome. So. That's what I'm gonna do here. D to this G and then suspend it. Notice how that sounds. So that's just one option. Those are two inversions of G chords that you can use. There are many others up and down the neck. Again, keep this in mind. The three notes that you need to make the G chord, G, B, and D, one, three, five, okay? For D, D, F sharp, and A. So if you can find these three notes on the strings, you can find new and really cool and interesting inversions of those chords, okay? So definitely, I wanted to plant the seed there for you guys to think about that. You could even do it here, D and G. And do that G suspended again. Let's talk about that one. I'm gonna get to some questions and we're gonna call it a day, folks. This has been so fun teaching you guys. I absolutely love playing the song and I hope you guys had a great time with this today. So we've got this D shape here, watch. First finger across the 10th fret of the B string and the E string. All right, second finger, go ahead and place that on the 11th fret 
of the G string, G is in go, that's your F sharp, that's your third, your third finger, place that on the 12th fret of the D string. Hey, that's where things start repeating again. There's your D note, okay? Now, what you can do here, so there's your D chord there. Say you wanted to do a D suspended four, just like we did with the G up here. Place your pinky on the 12th fret of the G string. Let's have a listen to that. Beautiful, right? I love suspended chords. I love suspended chords, they're so fun. So check this out. Hey, wait a second. We can play the, just because we play a chord one place doesn't mean we can't play it anywhere else. We did it here too. There's another version of G. How do we know this? Well, let's go ahead and look at the notes. Your middle finger, second finger, place that on the seventh fret of the E string. That's B. So that's our third from G. Checked off the list. Okay, now we need to find the one and the five. First finger, place that on the seventh fret of the G string. Hey, very cool. There's D. There's your five. Check. So now, third finger, we place that on the eighth fret of the B string. There's G. There's your one. So the way that this has been laid out is D, G, and B. Those of you keeping along with the number, right? The numeric formula of this chord five, one, three. D, sus4 to D, to G, do a suspended 4 there too, why not? Place your pinky, this time, on the 8th fret of the E string, there's your C. So pretty cool stuff, right? So listen to that. I'm planting the seed here. I'm just wanting to give you guys ideas. So there you go. So there are two different inversions of D, of the D chord and the G chord that you can use along with the D and G chord here. You'll notice a few times that I did put in a C add nine in that chorus. It'll sound good too. It's okay to do that every once in a while as well. Again, it just thickens it up a little bit. So folks, that is your time is gonna come. That is my lesson for today by the awesome Led Zeppelin. I hope you guys had fun. If you enjoyed yourselves today, be sure to subscribe to all the awesome Fishman social channels. Check out all the good stuff that's going on there. And be sure to subscribe to my channels too, Angela Petrilli Music. You can go there on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all of that good stuff and Instagram. Uh, be sure to say hello. Let me know how these lessons are, are going for you too. Post us and, or, or tag us in your videos and, and let us know how things are, are going and moving along. I hope you enjoy them and I sure enjoy these as well. It's, it's, thank you all for the kind comments too. It's been really, really cool. It's, it's an honor and, and I'm very grateful and thankful every week that I, I get to do this and get to teach you guys how to play some of my favorite tunes. Um, again, we'll be back same time, same channel next week, 12 p.m. Pacific time because I'm in Los Angeles. So folks, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube and all the socials to make sure you get your alerts on when we're doing these again. So again, this was, this was such a blast. I'm, I'm seeing there's a lot of love for this guitar today. Thank you so much. This is the Martin SC13E. Be sure to check this out. I did a really cool, fun video on this with the folks at Guitar Center. You can go ahead and check that out on YouTube too, playing this thing and showing you guys what this thing can do. But I'll be bringing this one back to other lessons too. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, this, was, this is a super fun one to play. So next week is gonna be acoustic too. I haven't chosen the song yet, but I will let you guys know. And again, thank you all so much for all, all the good vibes. I appreciate it and I am, Again, it just this is this is just such a blast. I really really enjoy this. So, everybody have an awesome weekend. You guys take care. 
be kind, stay safe, all that good stuff. I look forward to seeing you at a show real, real soon.